Hi again, everybody. Uh, welcome to my video. This time I decided to do something on I enjoy watching, and a lot of people have come to enjoy horror movies. First, let's talk about why these films are so popular, even from as far back as the silent film era. What makes horror movies so great is that they give us a way to face our fears or they work on the emotional primal level of fear in our body and they also allow us to enjoy being scared in a way that doesn't hurt us and another way reason for their popularity is the same as any other genre that's become popular such as comedies even Shakespeare wrote about um, the idea of their way to escape reality, escape the everyday life. Some people don't like, and it allows for them to be happy for that few minutes to an hour long, to a couple of hours where they don't have to be themselves and they can be happy with what they're watching and see somebody else's life. Okay. Um, in this video, I'm going to describe what I call the evolution, but it could just be viewed as how things changed. And I'm also going to list films in this and give you, at the end of this, I'm going to give you a few films. I mean, I'm going to give you some films that I actually think would be good to watch and that would have lasted the test of time. And I may throw in some facts that people knew or may not have known. And feel free to leave a comment about your favorite movie in the horror genre or and I mean or what you actually enjoy in this same genre. And again, also comment for a topic you'd like me to discuss next time. Now, what I refer to as the golden era of horror movies, this goes from the silent film era to about the 1940s, early 50s, when they started having actual speech in the films. Um, the earliest film I know of, that'd be a good example, I mean, good examples of this are Nosferatu, which is loosely based on Dracula, and Mel Morasso is Dracula, and the family even sued. The fact that some people don't realize that they actually sued and won, leading to the majority of the copies of the movie to have been gotten rid of. Also, another thing about Nosferatu is that it is one of the earliest examples of a movie to have a cult following after, I mean, throughout the years and stand the test of time. Another example of a horror movie would be Frankenstein and Found with the Opera. Well, in the 1950s and even up to today, there became what known as I mean, films that were known as I mean, certain theaters would employ ideas to get people's attention to watch these movies and use what they called gimmicks. And they're still used today. Your 3D movies are a great example of this. Some earlier ones such as the original House of Wax. I mean not the original because it turns out something I didn't know. The not I mean the Vincent Price version of House of Wax is actually a remake of an earlier film. And but another film Vincent Price did called House on Haunted Hill, which was later remade had what was had this skeleton that was placed in theaters that they would move from the background to the foreground during the film to give fans a fright. And the original Thirteen Ghosts used what was known as cellophane filters, where if you took um, a blue filter and placed it over a lens 
or over the screen, you would be able to see the actual film's true nature, where it revealed both the actor and the person who was playing the ghost. But if you didn't, then the film would appear as normal, and it would just look like a spirit was actually haunting the person. And 13 Ghosts, the original, also something that wasn't known to a lot of people, actually has an in-joke, actually has a joke made in it, towards the actress, that towards one of the actresses in it, who played the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. Throughout the film, she's asked, but never actually answers the question of, are you a witch? One of the late, one of the ones that's considered to be the last of the gimmicks era of them is the movie Psycho by Alfred Hitchcock, everyone knows, which had a no late admissions fee, man, no late admissions allowance policy. I mean, if you showed up after the film started, you were not allowed, and you had to wait for the next airing of the film in order to get in. And this was to keep people from actually revealing the secret of the film. Okay, another big thing that came out in the horror genre that I'm actually a fan of is the slasher films. Again, Psycho is one of the earliest examples of this. Where even though it wasn't considered a horror movie to most, but actually a thriller, to me, it counted more in the slash. It was the earliest example of the slasher genre. Then came the found. Then came a great movie by the name of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then probably one of the earliest known as a slasher film that came out was a movie that helped Jimmy Lee Curtis's career be really popular is Laurie Strode, known as the movie Halloween. Make Michael Myers, which used a William Shatner mask turned inside out to make the mask. Then along came the camp films. Michael, I mean, Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th, Angie in Sleepaway Camp, which had a nice twist on it. Now that I look back on that film, and the way the story was done, when I first saw it, I thought it was just a badly done movie. And nowadays, I watch it, and I think, this was really well done for its time, and the twist in it is actually really nicely done and added. And then among these, slasher films, 1984, and to even the present, the, movie, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Starring Fred, I mean, originally starring Robert England as Freddy Krueger. And if you go back, and this is where I disagree with a lot of people with the Nightmare on Elm Street series, they claim that Freddy was just a child murderer in the first, in the original set. However, in the remake, they made it into where, where he's a child molester and not a murderer. To me, a phrase that was used in the film was filthy child murderer, and to me that's actually suggested that Freddy did more to these children than just kill them in the originals. To me this suggested that he did actually rape the children and kill them. And when he was caught, the people were so disgusted that he got free that they killed him. And then he became the villain that everybody knows today. However, in the remake, which stars Katie Cassidy, people may remember as the Black Canary original in the Arrowverse, or the original Ruby in Supernatural. She was in first she played the replacement Tina. She was actually great casting for this in my view. But in the nineteen eighty four version, when they did the original when they did the Filthy Child Murder line, like I said, I saw it as a raping, as a child raping murderer. Whereas in the remake, he was just a heavy child molester who hurt these kids and was known to have left marks on them. And the parents reacted off of that. And Frey just became a vengeful spirit. 
rather than a spirit of vengeance in itself. Another one that a lot of people leave out that I think gets overlooked personally is the Animal Killers movies such as Albert Hitchcock's The Birds, 1970's Jaws, the original, where you hardly ever actually see the shark in the film, which made it all the more special when it actually did attack and show up. And then off of that movie, this movie I think came from it as an alternate version. The movie Orca, where a killer whale takes on the role. But Orca actually had a better idea behind it when it was done. There's also the sci-fi horror. Uh, Godzilla franchise and The Day the Earth Stood Still, which I didn't know there was actually a remake of this, which stars Keanu Reeves as the alien. The, speaking of aliens, the alien franchise, which, by the way, there is a scene in Spaceballs that parodies the first aliens in the first alien movie where the actor who was in the original Alien is playing the same role in that movie. I mean, in the Spaceballs parodies scene, which is where it says the line, not again. Originally, I didn't know this. And then I found out later on and found it interesting. Another one that gets excluded from this a lot of times, but I think it should actually count, is The Little Shop of Horrors. And I think it was a wonderful film in the original Black and White. The remake with Rick Moranis, where he did a lot of singing and stuff, was funny. And I think it fell into my next category with the Rick Moranis version, known as the comedy horror. This is the comedy and horror section. My top in this one would have been the Cabin in the Woods movie because it made fun of all the horror tropes, but at the same time, shows you what they were actually like. And there's also the Leprechaun franchise. But in this case, I do have one or two movies in the franchise I would have left out. Any of them that star Warwick Davis from the first one to Leprechaun back to the hood, those were actually pretty decent. But the Left in the Hood and Back to the Hood were not as good as their previous ones. And the most recent one, at the time this was done, um, Leprechaun Returns, where it's considered to be a direct sequel to the original Leprechaun, was actually really good. And to me, kept true to the story. But the ones that came out between Back to the Hood and Leprechaun Returns, I would avoid. Um, another example of a comedy horror, the movie Deep Blue Sea. To me, this film tried to be Jaws, but it had more comedy to it. Same with the movie Ghost Ship. And another animal, and an animal version of this, and an animal killer that goes comedy, in my view, is the movie, I mean, are the movies Arachnophobia and Eight Legged Freaks. Arachnophobia, sorry, in I think it's Jeff Daniels who takes over as a doctor in a small town where this spider has hopped a ride from Venezuela. And it turns out in this country, I mean in Venezuela, this spider, its type was king. But now it comes here and it decides it wants to take over a new land and be a true conqueror. Highly recommend this for anybody who enjoys spider movies. A Lady of Freaks, I mean Freaks, is a serious comedy type for a movie where it does more comedy and stars David Arquette and it is proof of this. Okay, now today's films that have become more popular are remakes of older ones. Again, two examples of this are House on Haunted Hill and Thirteen Ghosts, both of which fall under Dark Castle Entertainment. And a lesser known fact about this is that the company that's producing on Dark Castle Entertainment is actually named 
for William Castle as an homage to him. And William Castle is the director of the original House on Haunted Hill and 13 Ghosts movie. And the House on Haunted Hill remake from 1999, I think it is, actually stars Bam K. Jensen, who most people would know later as Jean Grey and Brian Singer's version of the X-Men trilogy from the early 2000s. Another example of remakes that got famous later on that and these two I actually disagree with. I think the originals are way better than they would lead you to believe that the new ones are. Um, are Friday the 13th and I believe Valentine. And for you Supernatural fans, I would recommend these films if you really want to see Jared Padalecki or Jensen Ackles in a horror movie role rather than being in just Supernatural type situation. Another movie that... Now this movie I seriously recommend as avoiding if you're Unless you want to do a comparison that badly. That's the movie Black Christmas. You, because these two films, despite having the same title and supposedly being based around the same idea, are completely different in the way their stories are told. It goes from being about the urban legend of the caller in the house to a man who is killing people and having an incestuous angle thrown in that wasn't even in the original and I don't know why they threw it into this one and apparently they're going to make another version if they haven't already this year of it and I'm not really sure because of how they did the last one if I actually would want to see this so if you have seen it or are going to see it let me <laughs> Send me a message or something letting me know how you like the movie. Of the 2019 version that's supposed to be coming out if it's not already. Another one. That, another section I'd like to discuss are the imported or Americanized versions of foreign films. Number one on this list, the Godzilla movie from 2000 that Matthew Broderick did. Now, I personally really didn't like this film and for a long time I saw it as an insult. Little did I know that there was actually at one time a group of people who actually wanted to have this film banned because it was so bad and have it stated that it was actually that it should never be included as a Godzilla film and should actually be retitled completely as something else as it insulted the movie and a lot of people considered it an insult to the original director of the Godzilla movies okay another one now good example of movies that were Americanized from their um, other from their foreign alternative from their foreign originals the ring the Grudge, The Eye, and Pulse. Now, this next one I'm about to list is one I consider to be a great film. And I wish I could actually find the original version and see it. It's a film called The Uninvited in the American version. And the original Korean version, the original Korean name translated to A Tale of Two Sisters. The reason why I'd like to see the original is because of how this film was done. It apparently changes the ending of the story. Which, to me, from what I know the original is supposed to be, would actually make more sense with the movie to me. But both films, I would hope, are very good. But I know the Americanized version of it is actually really good. Now, I would like to do a list of my favorite horror movies, and I'll even tell you why. 
highest on this list. And these are films that I would be able to watch over and over. Again, one of them, I mean, at the top of this list is the Nosferatu silent film because the music actually helped the movie to make more sense and be more scary than just the way the words would have been if they'd actually had them during this time. And like I said, this film is one of the earliest examples of a film to have a cult following. And the 1950s version of A House on Haunted Hill, because Vincent, almost any film with Vincent Price in it is great. And also the 1984 version of A Nightmare on Elm Street, I'd recommend for any horror film that's in the slasher type deal. Because while Freddy doesn't do as much killing as he would in later films, in this one, his character has more of a driven personality that actually makes sense and makes him seem darker than he is. The original Hitchcock version of Psycho. I'm sorry, how people can think that Janet Leigh was a bad actress in this film, I have never understood. And why they think that it needed to be remade with Vincent Vaughn. At least I think it's his name is Vincent Vaughn. But the reason why they thought it had to be remade and then it had to have a, another version of it called American Psycho makes me question what they were thinking because it's completely wrong. The Psycho series 1 and 2 especially were great. I think they could have stopped there and it would have been perfect. But 3 and 4 were alright but not even close to as good as the original one. Nothing will compare to the original Hitchcock Psycho in that series. Bob Barker's Hellraiser from the 80s. I mean, the original Hellraiser. Well, I actually had both the first and second one because those films actually made sense. From then on, the quality goes downhill. And Clive Barker even actually had him send in a note saying how bad he thought these films were after his time. And had them remove his name from the series, I mean, from the series, so that people would not continue to, um, not continue to say that, I mean, to associate him with the films, and even the actor who played Pinhead through, oh, I mean, through I think it's seven of the films, the last three, leading up to the current one, Revelations, actually quit the thing and they had to go to another actor to play the role and the look is totally different between the two versions of Pinhead. But again the original it tells the story it's dark and it doesn't and like most of the films that were the original versions they didn't have to show as much blood and gore as they do nowadays in order for people to consider it to be a horror film which to me actually makes a lot more sense is and it's also why I don't consider the Saw franchise to be part of a horror movie series. To me, that's more psychological thriller because it focuses more on the psychology of the people and how to mess with their minds than it does to actually try and scare or cause some type of actual truth in itself in the traditional horror fashion. And also, with Saw, it's more about the blood and gore than Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers ever were, in my view. And now here's where it gets a little iffy to me because in this case I could actually vote either one of the versions of the movie of the Children of the Corn. You could go with the version from the 80s starring Linda Hamilton. I think that's who it is, is Linda Hamilton. But the original Children of the Corn from the 80s, pretty much any Children of the Corn in the franchise I liked, actually. And then the remake they did that they just, child, that they just entitled Turn of the Corn, they went with the original Stephen King style ending, which is a difference between their 80s version and the current version that they had of it. And personally, I think the Stephen King style ending actually made more sense 
to the story than the version that they used in the original. Now again, Cabin in the Woods. Basically takes a traditional horror film styling, turns it on its head, and makes people happy. With 13 Ghosts, as good as the original, as good as the new one was, which stars, I think it's Elizabeth Shannon's her name, but it starred Tony Shalhoub, the guy who played in the movie Monk, I mean in the show Monk. Um, I actually have to vote that the Vincent Price one was a lot better, especially with the gimmick that they used as the cellophane, which the glasses in the movie, I mean in the remake, that everybody was so happy about, for some reason, was actually based on the cellophane idea that they did in the gimmick version. Uh, and a good number of Stephen King movies, I would recommend it, old or the, I mean, the one from the 90s starring Tim Curry, very good. Tim Curry was a great actor in that movie as Pennywise. And the new one with Bill Skarsgård, I haven't seen it, Chapter 2, but I'm willing to bet that it's probably as good as the Chapter 1 was. It would be well worth it. And Skarsgård does really well in the role as Pennywise as well. Another one, uh, Sleepwalkers, about a family who travels feeding off, about a mother and son who travel feeding off the youth of virgins and their shapeshifters. What makes this one interesting is that for some, for some people they wouldn't have recognized him at the time, but Ryan Krause who played Leo White on Charmed, the original version um, was actually in this movie as your main antagonist. And me saying that, it wasn't actually a spoiler, but it is actually showing you the range of his acting. And for my final choice on this list would be the Sometimes They Come Back movie. And sometimes they come back. It's about having about a person who has to deal with their past because it literally comes back to haunt them. And and what happens when your ghosts or demons catch up to you? Thank you for watching this. Now, please, again, feel free to leave in the comments your favorite horror movie scary movie, however you want to say it, that you enjoyed, and why. Also, again, please, feel free to leave me a topic to talk about next time, and I will take it under advisement, as usual, and might even actually do it, if I actually like the topic, or think I can actually discuss it for you, I mean, discuss it in a way that's fair. Have fun.